you could join me. I'm Pixie. I make videos about art and books and today I want to tell you about my favorite books I read in 2021. I'm very excited. I love talking about books. I really enjoy it. And please, please take this opportunity to tell me about the books you really enjoyed this year. It's just so nice to hear people enjoy things. I love that for us. So, in chronological order, because I, I have my, my 2021 challenge here, and I'm starting at the, at the beginning. This is fiction, by the way. I chose to not include nonfiction and poetry. I only read two poetry books, books this year, by the way, and the best one was Poems of Nazim Hikmet, a revolutionary poet. He was so good, just so good. So big recommendation. The other one was Halsey's poetry, which was fine. The first book I want to talk to you about is Embassy Town by China Mieville. I don't have it because I borrowed it from my boyfriend, but it it was so good. Whew. Okay, so Embassy Town is a sci-fi which is about an embassy of ambassadors who are in charge of communicating between the human society and the alien society that they cohabitate on a planet with. And it's really an exploration of language. And if that sounds dull, I want to just say that when I was halfway through the book, everything had been turned on its head and I was like, this is really messed up and there's half the book left, like what the fuck is gonna happen? Um, so it is, it's not gonna be what you expect. You're gonna have a ride, you're gonna have a time. And I highly recommend having that time because it was amazing. China Miebel is a genius and I love him. And then The White Tiger by Arvind Adiga. I did a reading vlog when I read this so I will probably absolutely remember to put like a link down below or a card or, or something. Um, but this book is about a poor man in India and at the start, we find out that he murders the man he works for. And then the book uh, is like everything that led, led him to that point. And you know I'm all about a good revenge story. And this one is told in a very like humorous, satirical kind of way. It's, it's really an indictment of capitalism in India. And I thought it was great. Then I actually read another of my favorites straight after that one. And that was The Confession by Jesse Burton. Also, look, isn't this cover so pretty? This book has shitty bisexual representation. And I don't mean shitty representation. I mean good representation of a shitty bisexual character. And I just appreciate that. Even though I don't think I'm as much of an asshole as the protagonist's mom is in this one, I, 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 I just appreciate it. It's, it's like that TikTok comment that's like, I support women's rights, but I also support women's wrongs. I love it when they do bad things. That is me about one of the characters in this book. It's, it's hard to describe why I enjoyed it. It's just one of those books that made me feel like I am part of the world and it is part of me and we are all together in this universe for better and worse. I don't know, that sounds very cheesy, but that, that is genuinely how it made me feel for some reason. Uh, our protagonist her mom disappeared when she was a baby and the book is about what 
what happened? Where did she go? What, what did she do? And we also follow, like from her mom's perspective in the past, um, what led, led up to the disappearing point. And I found that really engaging as well. Uh, like multiple timelines usually works pretty well for me and I, I thought it was well done in this one. This is a bit of an outlier. This is the one four star book I'm gonna talk about. And it wasn't originally gonna be in this video because I only gave it four stars. But when I looked through what I have read this year, it does stand out as one of the more thoughtful and interesting and well-written books. And I don't know, I wanted to shout it out for that. It is really a really interesting exploration of what if we had socialism on one bar and moon and there was a capitalist earth pretty close by, what problems might arise? Because uh, you can't have socialism on just one moon, just like you can't have socialism in just one country. I'm pretty sure I said that exact thing when I talked about this book in a video earlier this year, but it remains true. It's clear that Le Guin has put a lot of thought into these issues, and I really appreciate that. So it's, it's a really good read. The reason I gave it four stars and not five was because I was really upset at a scene where the very sympathetic, otherwise, protagonist um, almost assaults someone and I didn't see the point of it. I have since discussed it with other people and I understand now what Le Guin was trying to do. I, I feel like in theory it works but it didn't work for me when I read it because I got so upset. So that's why this is not a five star when it otherwise should have been. Um, but I would still recommend it. The, there's no like explicit assault or anything. Uh, I was just super upset because it fell so out of left field and I felt extremely betrayed. So I, I just, I have a lot of feelings. I have a lot of feelings. And I think that's valid. My next favorite was A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith. I, I'm so glad I finally read this. I've been meaning to read it for years. It's kind of a classic. I think I finally read it because I uh, got it on like a randomizer thing when I did my first PB drawer. And it was so good. It's about a poor family in Brooklyn in the early 1900s. And it's just such a loving book about the struggles of being poor and the struggles of being human. And I love a book that I can describe as tender. There is not enough tenderness and sincerity in the world. And I just so love a book that gives me that. I'm not gonna dwell too long on these books. This is sort of a joint place. Anyway, if it looks slightly darker now, and it looks like I have a little bit less lip gloss on, that's because my boyfriend arrived. We we're gonna spend New Year's together. And I didn't start this in time, because I was tired. But as I was saying, the next book or books I wanted to talk about is, I'm just gonna talk about the whole trilogy as one, and it's The uh, Extraordinary Adventures of the Athena Club by Theodora Goss. And I did a whole video about them because they brought me out of a reading slump and they were just such a fun time for a gothic bitch like myself. So I'm, I'm gonna link to that video and just again shout out to Theodora Goss for bringing me just so much joy. And when I had finished that series I was like well what am I gonna do? but I really wanted to keep reading something. So I read 
The Housekeeper and the Professor by Yoko Ogawa. And I freaking loved it. It's more of a literary fiction. It's about a woman who's the housekeeper for a maths professor. And I can in theory appreciate that maths can be cool. But I have never like jived with numbers a lot. But when I read this book, I was like, okay, I, I feel like I get it on a deeper level now. Because this professor, he just loves maths so much and it's so sweet. Um, but it's not just about maths. It's m actually more about their relationship. Because the, the thing that I forgot is that the professor only has 80 minutes of memory. So every day when the housekeeper comes, he has forgotten who she is and he's got a lot of like little notes to remember things and um, it's a very sweet lovely book and also one I would describe as tender and um, yeah I really love it. Next um, is actually a book that I first rated four stars but then couldn't stop thinking about and raised the year rating to five and now I will not shut up about it. It's Kindred by Octavia e. Butler. It's kind of iconic, kind of modern classic, so you may have already heard about it, but in case you haven't, it's about a woman who time travels back in time to her ancestor at the start of the 1800s and he's a slave owner and she's a black woman and she has to find out that she's like descended from a slave owner and uh, in these time travel episodes kind of make sure that she gets born and it's um it's really well done it handles a lot of upsetting topics like slavery comes with that but i think it is done in a very it's done in a very sparing way her her style is very precise and I really appreciate that when it comes to this kind of topic. Um, it's descriptions of awful things are never gratuitous. It's just like just what is necessary, essentially. Uh, it is the book it needed to be, and it's really, really good. It's not a fun time, but it is a book that will touch you and stay with you and you I think you will be glad to have read it if you choose to give it a go that's what I'm gonna say I wasn't totally sure about including this one because now that it's been a while I don't fully remember exactly why I love this so much but I had such a good time reading this The Angel's Game by uh, Carlos Ruiz Sajon sorry about that pronunciation it's about a gothic fiction writer who accepts a contract, maybe with the devil or with an angel, who knows. It's uh, a little spooky and weird. It's very much a mystery. Uh, it was like a page turner for me, like I read this in less than a day. And it's a little thick, but I just could not stop. Which, I, I love having that experience. So now that I said that, I... Uh, I agree with my past self that this belongs on the favorites of the year because, I don't know, we, we, we get so distracted nowadays. Like when I was 12, I would not get up from a book unless I was forced. And these days I read a couple pages and then I'm like, mm, I'm gonna check Twitter. Bitch. <laughs> so yes, it was a good time. It also makes me want to reread the first book that's loosely connected to this, I think. They're both connected to this, like, library of forgotten books or something? Or the cemetery of forgotten books, I think. The Shadow of the Wind is that one. So this was my first read for Gothtober that I never did a wrap-up for. I had two more five-star reads in Gothtober. It was a great month. The second one was The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. It is a book about an orphan boy who gets taken in by ghosts in a graveyard and uh, apparently it's kind of a pastiche of the jungle book 
and also inspired by Gaiman's son playing in the graveyard. So I read it for the found family prompt in Gothrober. And it's it was one of those books that I could have read and loved when I was 11, but I got more from it now that I am an adult. It felt very all ages in the best way. It's just, it's a little spooky. Like the book does start with the protagonist's family getting murdered and uh, we have the mystery going on like why, why did this guy try to murder our main boy? It's just such a little bit. Like when there's spooky vibes but it's also like cozy, that's, that's my thing, that's my shit. I love that. I love it for me. And the final five star beat of Goth Chomper that I have been recommending left and right. They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. And I will just say this, a bisexual woman murders rapists and abusers. If that's your thing, read it. I, I had a good time. I had a really good time. It was so cathartic and just a wild ride and sometimes when you read a book you just want to be taken for a wild ride so shout out to Lane Fargo for doing that for me but it was a good reading year even though I didn't read as many books as I did last year I feel that I had some really awesome reading experiences so I, I am happy and again I did not include nonfiction in this list but I'm, I, I can tell you that the best nonfiction I read was Art and Revolution by Leon Trotsky. Again, let me know what your favorites were. If you have read any of these, if you hated them, I would be super interested to know how you felt about them. Just in general, talk to me about books and I will listen and I will talk back to you and we will have a good time. <laughs> okay, and before I go, thank you so much to my patrons for literally keeping the lights on in here. I love that for us. Thank you to you for hanging out with me. I really like that. I like talking about books to people. So I hope to do that more in the new year. And take care of yourself and I will see you next time.